Concord is a 5 vs 5 hero shooter from Firewalk Studios. The game will be published on PS5 and PC later this year, with a beta coming in July. The team behind the game is made up of powerhouses in the shooter genre, with veterans from Destiny, Call of Duty and Apex Legends among them. Concord has been in development for half a decade, but the public got its first real look at the game earlier this year during Sony's State of Play presentation. The trailer, which showed off the game's cast, didn't go down massively well, with some criticising its tone and dialogue. Well, we've now had three hours to play the game and the chance to speak to Kim Crines, Concord Director of IP and John Wisniewski, lead character designer on the game, about Concord's plans for the future, the gameplay philosophy and that controversial trailer. Yeah, that trailer, that moment is such a tiny slice of everything that we've been working on for years and years and years. We're excited for the game and for the IP to be, the game to be in people's hands, the IP to be in people's minds. Um, I think I'm personally very excited for the IP for folks to delve into the Galactic Guide if they're if that is something they choose to do. For these vignettes to come out on a weekly basis, you'll start to fall in love with the depth of the characters. That's something that you learn week to week. That's their personalities will unfold, their relationships are on, will unfold for you, their backstories. None of that is something you can get in a in a tiny little slice of it. But that's a start. That's that's there. There's something there. So so I'm glad folks watched it. I'm glad they participated, and I can't wait for them to see more. To see everything that is there. Part of the core identity of Firewalk in the games that, that we make and will hopefully continue to make is, um, is our gameplay foundation. Uh, we have a team that is uniquely skilled at building, building very immersive and fluid gameplay that just uh, feels tremendous in the player's hands. The second they pick up the controller, the game just comes to life and the, like every action is responsive and I've been a player of these games my whole life. These games are what I love to play. Uh, and I know that it's all about how does it play, right? And and so that's like, for me, that's the moment. I want players to come into the beta. Uh, if they don't like it after the beta, that's fine. Um, but I think, yeah, the, the initial reaction is all about like, how does it actually play in your hands? So with such a focus on unique characters and a fantastical setting, how does that translate to a competitive game environment when players have to be able to make decisions without a moment's hesitation? Our sort of like not fancy designer term for it is the round of the corner test. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an actual term that we use as we develop these characters and sort of the, the idea behind it is that um, it's a competitive PvP game, which means that for players to be competent, they need to be able to make split second fight or flight decisions. Um, it's an asymmetrical game, so some characters have advantages that other characters don't have. Um, when two characters round the corner <laughs> into a combat space, we need players to be able to immediately make a, an intelligent fight or flight decision. Um, and so they need to see that character and get a really strong read and understand who I'm up against versus what I'm bringing to the table. Do I fight or do I peace out and, and try to take this, you know, like find an advantage in another way? Yeah, and I would say even given so that, that they pass this round the corner test, <laughs> there's so much that we can do in a shape of a character, the, I'll call it environmental storytelling on a character. There's so many ways and we have an brilliantly amazing art teams from the concept art all the way, all the way down. Uh, and the, the kinds of storytelling that we can put on the shape of any character it's incredible. The ideas that our artists come up with to help represent some of the backstories, the ideas that our artists come up with that feed into the backstories, just like John was saying. That's what's so cool about this process is neither gameplay nor narrative nor art drives. We all steer together and we find that each idea influences the whole. So it is very iterative, it's very building, it's very layered. And so, yeah, we can, we can add a lot of personality through the way they dress, what accessories they're wearing, what color their skin is. <laughs> yeah. One of Concord's most unique selling points is its vignettes, which will dish out the game's narrative. These weekly shorts will explore character backstories, the season's overarching narrative, and more. We wanted to know about the implementation of such storytelling devices and how it fits into a genre where plenty of players will just simply want to play the game. 
Yeah, I think that's great too. So the way we approach the the lore and the narrative to this is that it is an added layer for folks that want to to invest in it, and it's there. And you know, it will come across to everybody who's playing. You'll you'll get little pieces even if it's not your jam, and that's totally fine if it's not. And that's one of the reasons that we build it completely out of that gameplay seed. It starts there. It starts with that vision, that fantasy for how you feel when you pick up the controller, and everything builds out of that. So even if you're somebody who uh, you know you're just there for the gameplay. We hope that the flavor that you do absorb enhances that, and it and it and it it just feels like it's part of that package. And ideally, if if you're there for the gameplay, it just runs in the background, and it's so seamless because it's built into those characters in the world. It's built into the world, and so if that's if that's not where you want to invest, you don't have to. If it is where you want to invest. We do give you the option, and that's one of the reasons that the Galactic Guide is outside of the matches as well. So it's the lore for our entire galaxy, for the entire IP. You can choose to participate in that, or it can just exist there, and you you know it's just this galaxy, and you happen to be playing in it. Uh, we're really excited for that, and then the vignettes as well. Uh, they'll build out the stories of all of these characters, uh, and and that is opt in. It's all tied together as well. Like the gameplay is obviously there. It's the, it's the thing that players are going to see and feel. Uh, the second they step into the game. But the, our approach to building these characters um, where the whole team is involved creatively at all points, um, it creates opportunities for the gameplay to be enhanced by the details of the character. Uh, like for example, um, as we were developing Star Child, we started with uh, a Berserker, a Battle Rager. That was it. We were just trying to make a character that 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 feels like a Berserker and plays like, uh, like a menacing, you know, active Battle Rager. And as we're building this character over time and all the teams are contributing, we're like, okay, what kind of weapon does he have? Okay, probably a, a shotgun, that's a good, you know, close quarters, like, dominant weapon. And the art team makes this this shotgun that's got a spike on it. Um, and then so it's like, oh, that's that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, and so then it's like, okay, well, how can we, how can we use that with gameplay? Um, so we make his melees are all about swinging that spike and then we ended up giving him a whole dedicated power melee button that is this sort of, like, raw visceral uh, swing of that shotgun. He just takes his gun and he hits you with it. <laughs> um, and that all came from uh, all the teams working together and going back and forth. And you know, the, the, the concept art team probably wouldn't have made the shotgun that way if Kim's team hadn't you know, built up the narrative of who that character is and where they come from and this is how they fight. Um, so it's, it's all the things working together um, and it just, it, it, it gets elevated on all levels and it makes the characters feel more authentic. Yeah. And he's a battle poet too. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're playing in a pretty unique space here. Uh, and really, like like John was saying, it started so much together. There was never there was never a time when this narrative uh, and this IP and the lore wasn't going to be part of what we were developing. We were just looking for the best ways to roll that out to players. So it, it, it actually very uh, genuinely built out of like, all right, these characters are becoming real people. How do we want folks to have a chance to fall in love with them? How do we get that information? out there this galaxy is a real galaxy how are we going to allow players to explore that so there comes the galactic guide now you can see the whole galaxy you can visit not just the worlds that you're going to play on map but a bunch of other worlds that build out the hundreds of years history of our galaxy all right these characters they mean something star child just to keep on that example he's from Kalos. he's from the blood tree forest the ancestors are buried in these trees and he, he goes through this ritual to earn that diamond skin that he rage rush, rushes with what is he like when he's just hanging out? Okay, so that's, you know, that incepts <laughs> the idea of like, what are these people like when they're just people? And and then we get the vignettes and we the reason that we're building out the vignettes is so you can fall in love with the characters and see what they're like off the battlefield as well. So it just, it came out of, we want to tell this story, we want players to have a chance to invest and we build out the tools to allow us to do that and to connect. The vignettes are something that uh, was really, developed really close to the inception. We knew that's something that we wanted to do. We knew that was a delivery system for narrative that we wanted to pursue. And that weekly cadence has been something that we've been committed to since the very beginning. That has been our idea, our ideal, our target. Uh, and there has been a lot of work put towards making sure we have we can support it, making sure the story is there, making sure that it was developed in concert with the game, that the, that all of the uh, content that you'll see season to season is represented in the vignettes that you'll see season to season. Uh, and we're excited to see how players uh, receive that. 
yeah there's a lot of content in the pipe like like you know we have a team that is has experience with live services games mm -hmm. and so you know we're focused on the launch right now but we're also working very hard on what's going to happen after with the game launches while Concord has some trappings of a free-to-play title, it will be released for $40, around £35. We wanted to know what other ways the game plans to monetize, especially when it has to fund a huge amount of ongoing content with vignettes. Concord, we're going to launch with our 16 characters, our 12 maps, and our 6 modes. And that's all uh, included content when you buy the game. Seasonally, we're going to provide new maps, new modes, new characters, and this unfolding story. So you'll get new vignettes that are related to the seasonal content, new galactic guide that is unfolding the story. All of that is included. All of the gameplay relevant things. There are purely cosmetic pieces that you can choose to further customize the look of your character uh, that you can choose to purchase every season that content will also come out for you but those do not affect gameplay the things that you need to play the game the elements that you need to know the story the vignettes all of that because we believe so strongly that that full experience should be available to all of our players so yes if you purchase things that are purely cosmetic you know well the galaxy of concord we really designed to be um, a foundation to start from and i think i mentioned this but it's really important to us that it supports our players delving as deep as they want to for as long as we're lucky enough to have them with us. And part of that means being really true to the thing that we're creating. Uh, so we've built out this lore, this galaxy, all these worlds, this galactic history to really mean something. And we want to be authentic to what Concord is and who these people are and the worlds that they're from. And we still want players to have fun too. So the cosmetic options are gonna, um, you know, they're gonna lean into lore. They're gonna lean into uh, character personality. And they're also going to be, you know, fun and expressive fun and, for yeah. players. Like Kim said, the fashion game is going to be strong. The fat, yeah, I, I'm so excited yeah. <laughs> to see the combinations people come up with. Yeah. different characters. Concord's development team is obviously stacked with FPS talent. And from the time we've spent with the game, that's very obvious. With such a heavy narrative focus, we wanted to switch gears and ask about the philosophy behind Concord's moment-to-moment -moment shooting. The gameplay foundation was a huge emphasis on the game. It was one of the things that made me want to work there, you know, as a gameplay designer, uh, knowing that um, the the founders of this studio were building a team made of veterans who know how to make good gameplay. Uh, when I saw the team that was going there and I heard the vision for the game, uh, this it's where I had to work. It's absolutely where I had to work. Um, and so, yeah, that that commitment to the gameplay foundation and making sure that it felt as good as we know it could feel to play the game um, was was important before any code had been written uh, and it remains important now up until like the final days before the game comes out and as we look to the future what are we going to expand on what are we going to build on there's like there's so much cool stuff that we didn't get to. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really depends on what direction we want to go. Um, there's there's a ton of whiteboarding. Some of it is in various stages of completion. <laughs> um, you know, we're just hyper focused on just having a really great, solid release, inviting the players into our world, seeing what they're excited about doing, lining that up with our various whiteboards and going, all right. That way! Let's execute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like any hero shooter, Concord has faced a fair amount of comparisons to other games. So what does Firewalk think of all those Overwatch comparisons? Quite a team shooter. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Kim said it, Kim said it well, right? Where um, the reveal, what people have seen so far, is just such a small slice of, of the game. And I, don't, I think the game speaks for itself when players get their hands on it. Um, I'm not bothered by that at all. I mean, Overwatch is a great game, and that team did some incredible stuff for the uh, the genre. Um, and I, at the same time, I I strongly believe that our game has an identity that is unique to itself, and that it plays like nothing else out there. We knew what we wanted to do from the very beginning, um, and we laid out the plan. And it's been a matter of working really hard to deliver on that plan for many many years yeah. um yeah and i think it has been it's but we've stayed core to what we what we set out to do 
Concord looks like the Concord we hope with room to grow into the we had big ideas uh, yeah. that that obviously there we had to build a strong foundation first and that's what we've done and we hope to continue building but that strong foundation is Concord it's what Concord has been mm -hmm. the live service space is unforgiving with games seemingly shut down as quickly as they release so does the team worry that in an ever-changing gaming market that the live service ship might be sailing Game development is full of worry. Yeah. It's full of worry. Uh, but yeah, as Kim said, um, you know, the, the vision for Concord has been consistent. And um, I'm really glad that we didn't, uh, we didn't try to do anything beyond just a really solid foundation. Just yeah. something that is uh, simple to understand, makes sense to players, and is just fun, fun, fun. Just it like feels working, so good to play. working on yeah. that foundation. Um, I'm really glad we didn't call the shot because it means that we can expand and we can flex. Concord releases later this year with a beta coming in July. If you'd like to see 10 minutes of exclusive footage from Concord, check out our other video on the channel. We also have a Q&A with your questions answered about the game. Until next time, be sure to subscribe to VGC and check out VGC, a video game podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jordan Midler. See you later.